Hi there, Scott Hamilton, Rockfile, back with another podcast review for your ears. This time, going to be talking about some music. Let me talk about the new Ozzy Osbourne album, Patient Number Nine. Yeah, I guess I am a little more animated at work. I'm recording another podcast at work because I'm still working in my home studio. So the album came out last week. I've been listening to it for a few days in my car, my headphones. We played every single song off of it over the weekend on my rock station here in Alaska. And um, I've had quite a time to sit with it. And i got to say, I like it better than the last one. I think it's a solid Aussie album. But one thing I was thinking about when I saw some people posting a few negative things about it. It's, it's, it's okay. You know, Ozzy's never been that great. Blah, 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 blah. Look, you've been around as long as he have, producing music as long as he has uh, changed the music world like he has with Sabbath and even his solo career and finding great guitar players throughout his solo career. I give the dude props, and I don't judge his albums against anybody else's but his own. Who else? How many people have been around as long as he have? Still putting out albums that are popular. Megadeth released a new album the same day. Theirs debuted at number three. His debuted at number one. Solo album from an old dude, you know, known for biting bats. Anyway, I've always been an Aussie fan. I got into Sabbath at a young age. It was one of the first heavy metal bands I enjoyed. Um, I was lucky enough in high school that he would come play big shows. Um, I remember he played the Fox Theater on his first and they, they did that whole castle thing that he later moved into the Omni, which was a much bigger arena. Um, and they did it half house because they had to stretch the castle all the way across. It was pretty amazing. I got to see Randy Rhodes. It was the second to the last show, I think, or the last show. Um, it was like on a Wednesday night. And he died Friday morning. There might have been one show where they were traveling in between. Anyway, I have a long history with Ozzy. And, you know, one of my friends posted the other day how great Bark at the Moon was. I'm like, wow, Jakey Lee's playing on that is a great album, but overall it's not a great album. It's not one I go back to, like, ever. Um, and a few of those in the middle. I thought No More Tears was really good. Osmosis wasn't bad. Um, there's some other stuff. But at this point in the game, that he can put out anything that's entertaining, that's good, that's quality, got to give a lot of credit to his producer. He's got to approve everything, obviously, but... Songs are short and concise. I would give a lot of credit to his producer, Andrew Watts, working with him again. One thing I noticed about the album from an audiophile standpoint, if you're into sound quality, it's kind of compressed like the last album. That's not a bad thing, especially when radio is concerned. But, you know, I've been listening to the latest Porcupine Tree album quite a bit. It's engineered quite a bit like the last Tool album. It's just every drum, every guitar note, every vocal everything just comes through so clearly in that mix and this is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum not that it's a, a an unclean mix or a terrible mix the, the album sounds fine um but it sounds very 2022 um what you download from itunes more than an audio file type recording that being said there is some incredible guitar work there's some great music um the production is good um it's a solid ozzy album that's how i posted the other day on facebook you know a lot of people will say um well, it's not the best album of the year. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to put it in the same league as the new Porcupine Tree album. Which I, the more I listen to it, it's it's a classic. It's an it's the one of the be, arguably the best album of the year from a musical standpoint, from an engineering standpoint, quality standpoint. But this is a great Ozzy album in a career that he hasn't had a whole lot of great albums since Sabbath. You know, the first two solo albums, Lizard of Oz, Diver of Madman, like quite a bit. Then there's kind of a lull in favor. I like songs. I make greatest hits for my Jeep on CD. Like I've got a Judas Priest. I've got an ACDC. I make my own of my favorite song, you know, my kind of greatest hits. And so my Ozzy greatest hits might pick one song from this, from Bark of the Moon, and one song from, well, it wouldn't be Thank God from the Bomb from Ultimate Sin, would it? Um, he's released some cheesy songs. Some of that's, you know, the writing is to blame. Some of it, the producer was to blame, whatever. But if you look at the entire career, this is a great album. All the songs are good. I could literally play every song on the radio in a special weekend and did. There's not, well, track 13 is a minute 48, kind of a mono acoustic recorded on the back porch kind of song. It's filler. But the 12 songs, solid, every single one. So we'll go through it real quick. Um, 
I've tried to do music reviews where I put sound clips in and I always got a, a flag on, on YouTube. So I'm not going to do that, but I know there, there are art or reviewers who do that. So I'm going to get to that point, but until I figure out the, the legalities of it, no music follow along with the album. So the first track patient number nine is the title track. Jeff Beck plays on it. It's been at rock radio for about two months. Um, it's a great song. It, it's good mid tempo Ozzy. The guitar work is great. It it sounds different. Um, it sounds like Ozzy, but it's you know, it sounds like an Ozzy song should. That's one of the best things about the album. It sounds like Ozzy should. I think the last one was a little bit more experimental, and you might like that better. But we didn't get a. Uh, an Elton John ballad, and we didn't need one on this album. It's more of a rock album all the way through. So if you've heard that song on the radio, it's a little bit longer, about a minute, minute and a half longer on the album version. It's 722 as opposed to what radio is playing, which is about four and a half, five. Um, and so you've heard that. Track two is Immortal. It's a short three-minute song. It rips. It reminds me of Stillborn. Um, Mike McCready from Pearl Jam is playing guitar on it. It's one of the best songs on the album. It's got to be a single. It just... it. It's quintessential Ozzy. Next, Parasite, Zach Wild song. Four-minute song, another one. It's short, it's concise, it's hot. Um, Zach Wild's guitar playing is amazing. Um, it's got a good hook, which is something you don't usually say about rock songs or metal songs, but um, I wouldn't call the album metal, although there is some metal riffage. There is some metal-ish, but I've never called Ozzy metal. I, you know, Black Sabbath was the original heavy metal, but by today's standards, they're kind of dark, hard rock really. Um, so Ozzy's been not, you know, back in the eighties when I was going to see both, Ozzy was more of a rock thing and Metallica was the metal thing. Iron Maiden was the metal thing. Judas Priest was the metal thing. Um, Ozzy was more on the other side, but I don't know. A lot of metal fans love him always will because of his connection to black Sabbath and who wouldn't. So that leads us to track four, which is no escape from now, which is one of the Tony Iommi tracks. It's six and a half minutes, six forty seven. Um, it sounds like Sabbath. It sounds like Tony Iommi. It, uh, I don't want to give any surprises away on this album if you haven't listened to it yet, but it's really, really good. So up to track five is the new single that they've released to radio as of last Friday. There's a video for it that the guitar player doesn't appear in it, but the guitar player is Eric Clapton. And that's just one of those names I never thought would be on an Ozzy album, but I'm glad he is. It's a good song. It's another mid-tempo song. It sounds great on the radio. Um, you can tell it's it's Eric Clapton. That's one of the best things about it. He starts playing over the top, almost like Layla, and then he's got the guitar solo. It just sounds like slow hand. It's wonderful. It, I, I really dig the song. Uh, we instantly threw it on the radio here, swapped out patient number nine for that one because we'd played that for a while. Um, I did read a story. I'll insert this. There was a story in rock and roll show prep for radio stations uh, a couple weeks ago, right before the album came out, that Eric Clapton asked Ozzy to change one of the lyrics in that song. He says something like, um, well, the, the whole idea behind one of those days, it's one of those days is so bad you lose your grip on everything. Um, like he said, it's one of those days so bad I don't believe in Jesus. Um, now, if you know anything about Ozzy or watched his documentary, you know he's very much into Jesus and uh, Christianity. But they always play with his his you know his persona, if you will, and his his public persona. And so there's a line that they repeat several times in it where he doesn't believe in Jesus. So I guess Eric Clapton had a problem with it, but once Ozzy explained things, um, Eric Clapton was okay with it because it's on the album. It's a good song, a perfect choice for a single. I think it's going to do well. Next is uh, track six, which is the second song with Jeff Beck called A Thousand Shades. It's four and a half minutes long. It's another great song. Wow. Why did Jeff Beck and Ozzy not work together before? I know Ozzy was known for working with young, hot guitarists, but he's working with some of the best on this album. I mean, Tony Naomi, Mike McCready, Eric Clapton, and Jeff Beck. It's solid. Next three songs are all Zach Wilde songs. Mr. Darkness is about five and a half minutes. It's track seven. It's a great song. Should be a single. Nothing Feels Right is also about five and a half minutes. Another Zach Wilde song. And that was the one they released only to like YouTube. Um, it wasn't an official single, but while Patient Number 9 had been out for a couple of weeks, they released that, a visualizer, as they do these days. <clears throat> and... Uh, they haven't released a single and probably won't now that it was kind of that that middle buffer song, but it, it's a great song. Evil Shuffle is the uh, last Zach Wilde song, 
at four minutes, 11 seconds, it again, why hasn't Ozzy done a song like this before? It's another almost mid-tempo kind of song. It's got crunchy chords and, and guitar riffs, as you expect from a Zach Wilde song, but um, it's a good track. It probably won't be a single, but now if they go deep on this album, they're going to release Degradation Rules with Tony Iommi. It's a four-minute song. And it is as good as Immortal or Parasite, some of those other songs. As far as an up-tempo, straight-ahead rocker, Degradation Rules, it just sounds great. Tracks 11 and 12 don't have any guitar players listed. I assume Andrew Watt. Um, I got this album digitally, so I don't have all the liner notes. I haven't looked up who played on everything other than those guitar players. So I assume Dead and Gone and God Only Knows, which both are not the the hardcore ballads I thought they were going to be based on their names. Both are kind of mid-tempo Aussie songs and not just, you know, uh, that Elton John ballad from the last album keeps popping up in my head. And then there's Dark Side Blues, which is a minute 48, and it's recorded, you know, poorly on purpose to sound like it's on the back porch or in a small radio or whatever. So I think it's tight. There's there's nothing throwaway other than the throwaway thing that's on the very end of it. Um, it's been released on CD, vinyl, um, you can get it on iTunes. There is a high resolution version and I want to sample that, um, HD tracks and some of the other high definition files companies have a high definition version. Um, and I want to see if the mix sounds better than it does on the digital version I got. And I haven't picked up the CD yet, but I will, this will be one that goes up on the shelf cause it's worthy. And if it's the last album we get from Ozzy, this is what I said after the last one came out. If this is the last thing we get from him, I'm not, you know, I'm not sad. It's it's good. It's it can stand up there on the shelf. And if he gets around to releasing something else, great. But th- if this is the last, um, it's just good. It doesn't have to be the best thing he's ever done. It just has to be good quality. And I think the songs are great. I think the production's good. Engineering, I would like it to be a little more clean, but that's just me. Um, overall, I think it's a it, it, if you count it among it's one of the top five Aussie solo albums of all time I think I don't put too many Aussie albums at the top I go back to the first two more than any of the others and tribute just because I love Randy's playing but so if you haven't picked it up yet you're a fan I'd pick it up it's a good like I said I'm not not talking about this compared to any other album but I'll say it reminds me of ACDC's latest album Power Up that's a quality album I think the songs are stronger on the Ozzy album. The production might be a little bit stronger on Power Up, on the ACDC album. But again, you're getting these classic artists who are honestly too old to be up on stage doing what they do, but they're doing it, and it sounds good. So support them if you want. I do. Um, I would like more. I would like to continue it just for his place in the industry in the last 50 years of what he's brought to music. I give Ozzy props. He's not my favorite artist. You guys know I like prog stuff and weird. and But... You know, he was there for my formative years. His music has taken me through a lot of things. You can't listen to You Can't Kill Rock and Roll and not, you know, feel that in the pit of your stomach and your heart and rah, you want to go forward and live that rock and roll lifestyle. It's, you know. So anyway, I give Ozzy his props and he's recorded a great album. Like I said, if it's the last one, so be it. If not, well, long live Ozzy, but this is a good album. Check out Patient Number 9. It's available now. And as I look this up on Google, uh, 97% of Google users like it. (laughs) <laughs> That's as much of a barometer as anything these days in the internet age. So check it out. It's available in multiple formats, and it's great to have Ozzy back. He plans to tour. He says if it'll, even if it kills him. I hope that's not what happens. Anyway, Scott Hamilton, Rockfile. My links are below. Thanks for checking out this podcast. Keep listening to music. Keep buying new music. Support the bands you love, and they will continue to make music for you. Have a great day. Have a great day.